You're listening to The White Rabbit, conversations on the art of presenting in a rather noisy world. Your hosts are Matt Krause and Alper Rosanes. Matt helps leaders of international companies speak, write, and present with confidence. Alper is a communications trainer and a startup investor with a diverse portfolio of companies in Barcelona. If you like this podcast, please share it with friends and colleagues. Now, on to Matt and Alper for today's conversation. Upper, last week we were talking about AI, volume one, and mm-hmm. it, it was basically Matt spouting off his opinions. And then you were, you, you said, hey, on the next episode, I want you to back some, some of that stuff up with some, some data and statistics. And it reminded yes. me, uh, it reminded me of a, a quote, you know, that, that two, two Bob's podcast with David C. Baker and Blair Anst, do you know that one? Like the one which I listen to twice every day. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that podcast. Uh, one of the things that uh, Blair Ann says on that podcast, you know how, how usually on that podcast, uh, David C. Baker kind of, you know, he, he appears to be getting angry at Blair Ann's. You know how they do that sometimes? Yeah. So Blair Ann's will, will make some claims and uh, David C. Baker will ask him for the data to, to back up those claims. And there will be a moment of silence on the podcast and Blair Ann's will say, well, you know, David, I never do research. <laughs> So, <laughs> you did not do your research, did you? I did not do my research. Okay. <laughs> so let, let's talk about something else today. And, just like that. Just like that. Yeah. We. <laughs> we. we not like I feel bad. My apologies to the audience, etc., yeah. etc. Et no, let's just switch gears and talk about something let's else. Just switch gears and as smoothly as possible. Just hope that people forget. <laughs> okay. There's been no data provided to 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 back up the claims. Okay. So the the thing that I wanted to ask you about was how does this this AI thing how does this affect you as a slide designer? Because you need to the the one of the central needs that you have is that when you pass off a slide deck to a customer, if that customer asks, "Can I use these images?" You need to be able to answer yes, right? Well. I th- I think it depends on the situation. If you're giving them a finished document, let's say a presentation on a PDF file, okay. technically they don't own the images because, I mean, as far as I know, they don't own the images because they are embedded onto, in, onto the PDF. And okay. unless they use tools like extracting them, uh-huh. they wouldn't have access to the original files in the first place. Okay. So that is one scenario. Another scenario would be where I deliver an editable presentation file, one where they can take the images and use them elsewhere. In that case, what I do is I purchase the photos and transfer the ownership to to the client, which means I cannot use those photos in my future works. Okay. So AI, it sounds like a process that AI would be throwing a monkey wrench into. And it looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about how you in your slide design work skirt or somehow compensate for this issue. Well, it's very simple. I don't use AI in the slide design process. I mean, I use AI for other things, especially for organizing my thoughts or throwing it some like unclassified, not not unclassified, but unorganized bunch of notes and asking it for help to come up with with a structure. But other than that, in the visual aspect of any presentation design work, it's not a tool that I use. I don't think it is in that sufficiency yet. And I have tried it, by the way, and there are so many like the image generating platforms that, that are available today because When I designed the slide, when I designed the slides, okay, here I need a photo of someone, let's say, working on her computer. Mm -hmm. So what I did with AI was create the prompt and I was as specific specific as possible. Uh But then I ended up receiving these images with people having three arms, extended body parts coming out of like, it's, it's, it was completely unusable. Is it going to improve? Uh Yes, I believe it's going to improve, uh-huh. and maybe one day you will be able to get exactly this the the image that you're looking for. Okay. And what happens then? As far as I know, I mean, you and I talked about this before starting the recording, but at the present day, there was this like it was a court decision. I don't remember exactly, or was it the copyright office in the U.S. which said 
non-human generated works are copyrighted. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. So, and the court decision was that non-human generated images could not be copyrighted. Was that was that correct? Okay, both of us are walking on thin ice, so let's not make any binding declarations. But <laughs> okay. the general idea was that if it's not generated, if it is not created by a human, it, uh -huh. there is no copyright protecting it. Okay. In that case, I would assume, again, this is my biased personal opinion, I would assume that uh, you, would, you should be able to include it in the presentation and send it to the client. Okay. But again, currently, you would also face the consequences of sending like a forearmed person yeah. in the presentation and expect some backlash from the from the customer. All right, so it, it sounds like it sounds like trying to get involved with this AI legal morass is going to really put a crimp on you being able to do your work and put your food on the table. So how do you get around that? Like for for example, if I'm a, a slide designer and I use a slide in a presentation. Mm -hmm. Can I pass that presentation on to a client? You mean you're designing a slide, you you purchase some stock photos to put on it, and you're sending the file. Is that the same? Yeah, video? yeah. Okay. I, I am, am designing some slides. I go to you know Pixabay or something like that, and I get some stock photos and I put them in the into the presentation, and I send the presentation to my client. Yeah. Well, first of all, Pixabay and other sites like it are uncopyrighted, which means you don't need a license to use the photos that you download from those websites like Pixels okay. or Pixabay. So in that in those in those photos you're completely out in the clear. Okay. However, if you purchase a stock photo like from iStock photos or deposit photos or something like that, by the way, this podcast is nowhere near associated with those sponsored by, yeah. by those companies. Uh -huh. Full disclaimer. What you can do is you can use the image in the presentation, but the client has the right to use the image as part of the design. So technically they are not allowed to say, extract the photo, use it someplace else, because they're not, when you sell your service, you're selling your design service and the photo comes with it. So they, okay. are, they, are, they have the right to use it. Okay. But you cannot, for example, the client cannot tell you, hey, we like these images that you use in the presentation. Can you send us the raw file so we can use them elsewhere? No, they cannot ask that. And you shouldn't you shouldn't respond to that positively because you will be violating the terms of the stock photo agreement. What you can do alternatively, if the client insists, is either transfer the license, so you lose your access to the license um. in the future, or they can also buy the licenses and they can use it in any way that they want. Okay, so let me see if I'm I'm hearing you correctly. So with this AI morass, you, you've got a, a couple issues with these AI generated images. One is that now at least they are producing AI is producing weird images. Like you get, you know, a woman with three arms or you get a guy with four legs and and mm -hmm. so, so and of course you can't go to a client with with an image like that so like i said there will be consequences yeah there, there there will be consequences if you try something like that so that's the the bigger issue and then the other issue is that even if they fix that even if the ai generated images are perfect and awesome and you've still got the the legal morass of who owns these pictures and and Okay, right now, some lawyer in Ohio or some court in Ohio is saying that no one owns these pictures, but some other court somewhere else is saying, well, you know, uh, these images are owned. And so there's all these different opinions. It's a huge morass. No one knows who to believe. And so you're saying to avoid that, just go with the stock photography sites, the tried and true situations that you have already been using. Am I hearing you correctly about that? I mean, that's what I do. Oh. And I do that for the moment because the technology isn't there yet. If okay. one day I need a photo of someone working on their computer with a specific screenshot, let's say, and oh. I can type that and it comes to me directly, flawlessly, and like without forearms, like we mentioned, <laughs> yes, uh <-huh>. then <laughs> I will probably use that. But I think 
the previous cases that you mentioned, I think they deal with AI generated images heavily resembling actual works of art. Okay. I don't think they are dealing with people standing in line to buy a coffee. I think oh. they are dealing with photos that resum- resemble like the Starry Night, let's say, or or a Picasso painting. Mm, okay, okay. I don't think. I mean, this is my complete assumption. And since your, I mean, per your opening, I understand that we're free to make any assumptions that we want <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> so it is, it is my completely one hundred percent personal assumption that. If you take the photo, an, an AI-generated photo of someone standing in line to the court and say, hey, this is copyrighted, I think they would just laugh in your face. So okay. I think you would be safe in, in that domain. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So Sorry, I couldn't miss that chance to hit you with that. Yeah, thanks for that. All right, so we've got to <laughs> wrap things up for today. So before we wrap things up, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to mention about AI and images and slide deck design? At the moment, I steer clear of them. Okay. Because I don't see the results that I would want to enjoy uh-huh. so that I can pass them on to my client. Ah, okay. okay. Um, I understand that this is just a matter of time. Uh-huh. I, I'm assuming that it will get better and better in the future. So, But until then, I think I'm just going to keep staying clear of it and go with the with the other tried and tested uh-huh. sources, let's say. But the two examples that you gave, for if you, if you want to completely eliminate this issue from your life uh-huh. in the in the slide work, go with the uncopyrighted images. I mean, there are there are mountains of websites out there which provide these images, and they're pretty decent in quality, not only in terms of the pixel quality, like the resolution, but also in terms of the composition of the image. Because one thing I have noticed is on the commercial stock photo websites. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. they are almost borderline cliches. Like okay. all these people throwing their hands in the air, you know, with uh-huh. the thumbs up and everything. But uh-huh. those examples that we mentioned, like the Pixabay, the Pexels, and like uh, like similar websites, I find them much more attractive and, and high quality in terms of the content of the image itself. So, and they are free. But uh-huh. one thing I would recommend would be, which which is something that I practice if I use photos from there, uh, I give credit to the to the photographer. Ah, uh, okay. If it is a comer, of course, if it is a commercial work, it's it wouldn't be very easy to keep the photographer's name like on the title page of a giant corporation's investor <laughs> presentation. True. Uh-huh. But I make sure to include it at the end. I at least make it known that okay. this photo is taken by this person. Uh-huh. And, good and karma. Then, yeah, good karma. And you leave it up to the client. If the client really wants to be a jerk and and stop giving credit to people and take off that last slide, they yeah. can do that. But yeah, at least at least you get to go to bed and sleep soundly and know that you're a good person. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Alpha. We've got to wrap it up for today. Okay. Good talking to you. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to The White Rabbit with Matt Krause and Alper Rosanes. You can subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or through your favorite feed. Music